What's going on, fellas? Welcome to Antidote Talks. Hey, what's going on, James? Thanks for having me, my man. For sure, for sure. I got two good friends here uh, from different locations and uh, really just trying to get different perspectives. But today we're going to have a good conversation. Uh, these two gentlemen here um, have really just blessed us with an opportunity to share some, some parts of their life uh, that they lived. Uh, both of them have great stories. Uh, so as you're watching this, just, just kind of take note that we're kind of going through their particular lives in a certain time of their life. Um, but we're going to get to a point where they actually share about how they came out of that life and, um, you know, into, into a better life. So we have uh, Marcellus. Mr. Marcellus, how you doing, sir? Doing well, James. Doing good to well, see you. Man. Repping Shooters, D.C.? That's right. That's right. Exactly. It's good <laughs> to see you, man. How are things out in Maryland? Things are going good, man. Uh, just taking, spending a little more time just working on uh, my website you know, since uh, this coronavirus that's going on. So just, right. I've been spending a little more time, you know, with the family and uh, just working on the, a little bit of uh, my recipes on uh, my French uh, website that I have. Wow. Got so, you. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely put some plugs out there and put the website and stuff out there for people to, to follow you and support that business for sure. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But yeah, but it's good to hear you doing well out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Taj, how you doing out there in Texas in Houston? It's hot, man. You know, yeah. it's, it's definitely that time of the year where, you know, the humidity is going up. But, um, you know, we're, we're doing well, man. You know, God is, is, has been taking care of us. You know, we're, we're healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, the business has slowed down a little bit, but, you know, we're just taking it one day at a time and spending a lot of time with family and helping the kids with the, with the schoolwork and things like that, trying to make sure that they're good. And uh, yeah. that's it, man. Just hanging out, getting some good quality, you know, family quality time. Man. That's mm. good to hear, man. Good to hear you're doing safe as well. Um, but yeah, I just want to get into it. So both these gentlemen I've known for a while um, and uh, definitely get to know their, their lives. But just want to kind of get into some, some sharing about your life at one point. And we can start with Marcellus on this. Um, you know, take us back to a time when you were younger in D.C. And, uh, you know, the type of lifestyle that you lived at that time. Um, if you can kind of just share briefly about that, that time, you know, that maybe you don't have to say specific years, but just kind of the era, you know, a decade, if you will. And, um, you know, just a little bit about your life as, as a youth in DC. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, um, like, uh, for myself, man, I think it, uh, it all started off, uh, when I think I was at the age of 12 years old and my father, uh, was committed, uh, to uh, a mental hospital. And uh, he wound up uh, killing himself uh, with some restraints. Mm -hmm. And uh, that began uh, just a, a downward spiral, you know, for myself, uh, getting into, uh, you know, selling drugs, uh, hanging out, you know, uh, with the wrong crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a very, uh, a very challenging uh, a time for myself. You know, I think... Uh, I think I didn't really want to be able to, you know, get into that uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. but I think it was more so I was just looking for, uh, just looking for someone to, to influence me, mm -hmm. you know, and not being able to have that uh, father figure around, you know, just uh, led me to be able to try to find that in other places, you yeah. know, uh, you know, of the streets, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And what, what time frame are you talking about, like as far as decade? and? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it was night, around 1985. Back okay. in 1985 was the time gotcha. I actually uh, began started to, uh, you know, sell drugs. So not, not too far after uh, my father uh, passed away because I was living with uh, also my uh, stepmom and, uh, you know, my brother and sister. So. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So 80s, mid 80s in, in D.C. Yep. 1985 in yep, Washington, D.C., not too far from uh, Howard University, mm -hmm. or Georgia Avenue. So that was, right. you know, the area, you know, which, I, you know, I grew up. So yeah. and, it, and pretty much, I mean, uh, half of the neighborhood um, sold drugs, you mm -hmm. know. And um, like I said, you know, it's just I was just looking for that, you know, uh, that type of direction, something to be able to fill that void, you know? So, you know, I looked towards, you know, other friends, you know, who was doing it. So 
they were doing, I felt like, okay, well, I can, you know, be able to, you know, try it out myself. So, because it wasn't a, a good situation for me. And I'll talk about it a little later on as far as living in a house with my uh, stepmom and her, her kids. Gotcha. You know? and, okay. Yeah. Yeah, before we get there, definitely appreciate that. Just the, the deepness of, of losing a father, you know, mm -hmm. and losing that, that figure and then turning to something else, you know, to yep. find that void. Yeah, that void, yep. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Taj? Kind of share a little bit about your life as far as, um, you know, where you, where you grew up, kind of lifestyle that, you know, you had at, at, at a, as a youth as well. Yeah, I, I grew up in, um, in New York. It's a city called Yonkers, New York. I don't know if a lot of people will be familiar with it, but it's, it's about maybe 20 minutes from, from the city. And um, it's not, it's not w within the boroughs, you know, the five boroughs, it's right outside of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, we, we kind of considered it to be like the, the, the lost borough, Yonk is the lost borough. Yeah. And um, I grew up in, you know, that the time frame that uh, I really started where I can see my, my path, you know, getting off track was, was in the 90s. Okay. Um, about 95, 96, was when I first started, uh, you know, started experimenting with, with drugs and, you know, smoking weed and stuff like that, mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes, drinking beer. I was 16 years old at the time. Um, my, my, my mom and dad had split when I was like maybe 11, 10 or 11. And, um, you know, I, I grew up in, a, in a, a, a verbally abusive and a physically abusive household. Mm. My dad uh, was, was physically abusive. Um, at one time, you know, even though he, he really, he did a lot for us, you know, my, my two, my two sisters, I have an older sister, the youngest sister. And, um, I look back and I can tell that my dad really wanted to do right, but he had, he had demons that he was fighting as far as like just being disappointed with life and things like that. So he split and when he split, he was out of the picture. He moved out of the, out of the state of New York relocated to um to California. And so I look back now and I think I, I was dealing with uh with, with anger, a lot of anger and hatred. Mm -hmm. And um I felt abandoned. My mom went into like a like kind of like a depression. So she she became, you know, verbally abusive, even though she raised us to go to church and things like that. And so because I, I didn't see the value in God, I didn't see the value in church. Mm -hmm. Um I checked out and I was just searching and looking for, you know, for, um, for something, you know, some type of feeling. Yeah. And, um, so my, my homeboy, he, he, he kind of introduced me to, to, to marijuana mm -hmm. and, uh, and trees. And so we, we went to, we went to the Bronx on, I remember like it was yesterday, we got on the bus and we jumped on the train and, uh, went to the Bronx and we, we caught our first, um, you know, our first like, uh, um, ounce mm -hmm. and, uh you know we went from there you know we went yeah. from there and that was that was pretty much not i wouldn't say all of my, all of my friends were doing it but majority of my friends were, were already in the streets and yeah. um you know uh my, my mom and my dad wasn't really making a lot of money at that time so he wasn't paying child support my mom um you know she was just trying to hold the fort down and so as a man, as a young man, you know, I'm thinking I got I got to go out here and make my own money. Yeah. And, you know, so I gravitated to the streets and, um, you know, it kind of went, it, it went, you know, a downward spiral from there. The more, the yeah. more I got into the streets, the more my life started spiral, spiraling, you know, um, out of control. And, um, got you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate you sharing. So, how easy was it, Marcellus, to get involved with, you know, selling drugs at that time? We were talking 85 in D.C. Was it something that took you a long time to get into that, or was it pretty easy? Well, uh, it, it was pretty easy because, you know, back then, back in the 80s, those were the days of uh, Ray Fouetman, hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, far as selling like rocks. I mean, it seems like almost in every... Uh, every street corner, you know, there was someone, you know, that there was a strip, you know, or someone was, you know, selling drugs. So, 
um, it wasn't uh, very hard, you know, at all to be able to, you know, to get involved, you know, with that, you know, especially, you know, uh, when you have half of your community, you know what I mean, that's doing it and half of them are, are, are your friends. So, yeah. you know, I just, you know, me, I think me and another guy, uh, a friend of mine introduced me uh, to one of his connects, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, I think from, from then on, he, you know, asked me if I really wanted to uh, come and work for him, you know, so I decided, okay, well, you know, let, let me try it out, you know, because I seen, you know, a lot of, you know, of my other friends uh, doing it. So I thought, you know, okay, well, they seem to, you know, be pretty safe and not be able to get caught. So, you know, let me try to do it. So it, at, at first it, it kind of started off as a, a experiment, yeah. you know, but as time passed, you know, I became uh, good at it, so. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah. very easy, so. Yeah, so Taj, kind of tell me real quick, you know, as you got into that, you know, mid-90s, you're talking about a decade later, um, you know, starting off with, you know, a small amount, did, did, it, did it escalate from there? I know you said you, your life kind of downward spiral, but was there any, like, you know, I, I think a lot of people from our era, from the 90s, we looked up to those that were maybe before us in the 80s, like, man, yeah. these guys got money. You know, these guys are making quick money. Here we are, kids. We just want the new sneakers, you know, the right. new Jordans. Right. Um, were, were there any, like, part of that from, from it, too? Like, you wanted the perks, not just providing for your family, but were there any perks that you were trying to get as well? Yeah, so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't one of the, I didn't grow up in a household to where, like, my parents bought me Jordans mm -hmm. you know, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would see all my friends. You know, um, their parents, even though their parents, we, we live in a low income, you know, neighborhood and, um, you know, but their parents still, you know, try to get them things and buy them things. Um, one of my best friends, he had an older brother. Uh, his name's uh, T-Mac. We call him T-Mac. Mm -hmm. And uh, T-Mac was, was like my older brother because I always wanted an older brother. I had an older sister and a younger sister, but I didn't, my father wasn't there. So I didn't have, you know, any male guidance in the household you know I grew up with all women in the crib so it was like it was crazy you know yeah. um it was it was a great learning experience because it taught me a lot about women you know but at the same time I was looking for like that 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 um that connection like somebody to guide me and lead me and so my, my best friend his his older brother became the the person that I looked to and T Matt was he was a uh, he had a crew he had a crew that uh in the nineties where they, these guys was making big time money. And, um, you know, and, and so I looked up to him and I would, I would stand out there and just watch them. You know, I would watch them. I'm like, man, these dudes is, these dudes is killing them right now. So I grew up in that era to where, you know, the nineties was like, you know, the nineties for me was, was like, um, a lot of reflecting on the, the people that came before me, like Marcellus in the eighties, those, yeah. those who set the, set the tone you know, and the foundation for what, you know, my generation saw and what we, you know, gravitated to and what we try to, you know, live up to. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I appreciate that because it's, it's two two different sides, you know. I think the two different eras show a different side. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, real quick, Marcellus, if you could kind of share a little bit about, um, you know, a time where did it become full-time for you? Was it something you just kind of did on the side? Or, you know, at what point did it become something that you focused on, like, completely? Uh, it, after I came home from Job Corps, uh, 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 Drums, uh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, but before then, you know, it was just more of like a part-time, you know, part-time job. Me going to school, trying to, you know, just get, you know, a couple of extra dollars. But, uh, you know, once I, you know, got into trouble and... Uh, got sent to a uh, job call and uh, I think I stayed in job call for maybe, maybe a year. And uh, I got, uh, I got in trouble. So I got sent home and uh, then I made a, a decision, you know, that I was going to, uh, you know, start selling, you know, for a time, you know, and, and, and the reason also uh, for that was that, you know, cause me living with my, my stepmom and her kids, you know, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, favoritism, you know, in the house, you know. So I said, you know, I'm not going to be one to be able to ask for anything, you know, <laughs> anymore, you know. And um, 
I remember, you know, just one time on, on, on Christmas time, uh, them calling me, my stepmom calling me downstairs and, and uh, giving me this present. You know, it gave me like, I think two presents. One was a, a belt and another one was a tough skin jeans. <laughs> now, and I don't know if you remember the tough, the tough skin jeans. Those were the type of jeans that were so eye impressive. You was to hold them up that they could be able to stand up on their own. <laughs> they literally cut your skin, you know, because it was so sharp. But, uh, but my other uh, brother and sister, they got all the nice gifts, mm. you know, and I said, you know what? Okay. All right. So I made a decision there that, you know, I was going to start, you know, selling drugs for a time. And it got to the point where <laughs> it was so bad that, you know, I was so greedy is that I was standing uh, on, on a strip for like two days straight, wow. you know, I mean, we're talking about not getting no haircut. We're talking about not taking no baths. You know, we're talking about not changing no clothes. No, we're, we're talking about literally, literally being out there like, you know, two days, you know, because I was, you know, uh, so locked in, unfortunate, so locked in and so greedy, you know, to be able to get that type of money that I didn't want anybody else to be able to get it, mm, yeah. you know? So I would, you know, like I said, I would just spend a night nights out there mm. and it got so bad uh, to the point where I almost passed out, wow. you know, you know, because I was, I wasn't eating, I wasn't eating, I wasn't drinking, you know, I just, I, I stayed up, you know, stayed out on the strip and just, you know, just constantly sold, 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 you know, uh, drugs until my body just, you know, it, 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 it shut down and I, I passed out. And, um, you know, so I, I sent somebody uh, to go get me something to eat, you know, and yeah. uh, they came back, gave me something to eat. I got my electrolytes up and um, like a fool, I continue to be able to continue to stay out there a couple more days. Yeah. So, you know, it was that, to that point was that, you know, it was a full-time job. I, I took it uh, very, very seriously. Nothing else really mattered at all because, you know, I, like I said, I had gotten into trouble. I'd have been to a boy's village. Uh, um, I've been to a group home, you know, where my uh, stepmom and my mother, biological mother was there, where he's so out of control, you know, we just can't help him, yeah. you know? And uh, like I said, once sent me to Job Corps, you know, and you know you went full time from there and i went yeah i went full time and so yeah. real quick what just again for the kids at home you know that don't know what we're talking about a little bit and we're mm -hmm. going to get to the point where we kind of share more about how you got out of that life sure. but just for those that are watching purposes um again we're not condoning this but what was it like at the height what, what, what did the money look like and we don't have to get into details but just to paint a picture i mean weekly what did it look like was it was it worth it to you at the time? Uh, at the time, it, it was worth it, <laughs> you know, because at, at first I was working for someone else, you know. Um, you know, someone would get, meaning someone would give me, let's say, for an example, uh, a quarter a key, you know, they cut it into 20s, and uh, let's say they say, well, you know, you sell these for $20, um, and you give me four four thousand or five thousand dollars and you're you're able to keep you know the rest of the money you know so um by being able to do that you know i made a a, a pretty good profit at, at first you know so you know i made a decision why am i giving this money to this person here i'm giving this guy like you know five thousand ten thousand and you know depending upon you know how much you know weight they gave me rock meaning and uh well i can be pocketed myself so i stopped working you know uh for a minute for somebody and, and the money that i got you know um for my profit you know i built up my own connect uh someone who's you know we're kind of on a higher level meaning um and uh start buying from them and, and, and from there, I just started saving my money. I started from, let's say, $500, from $500. And I'm not encouraging anyone to do it, but yeah. from $500, you know, uh, I bought like a, a, a eight ball and, 
And from then, I saved the money, didn't spend anything. And that thousand dollars, you know, I bought something else. And, you know, and then from there, I made about 3,000. And from 3,000, I bought more weight to a point, you know, where I was start, starting to deal with uh, keys, mm -hmm. you know, kilos, you know. And, um, you know, from there, we're talking about <laughs> 100,000, 100,000, you know, almost close yeah. to like millions, you know, of, of dollars. So, wow. but uh, it was... Um, it was hard to, to try to be able to let go of that type of uh, lifestyle, especially yeah. having money at my disposal, you know, you For know, sure. had to be able to get safe to be able to lock it up, you know, so. Yeah, it was, um, it's a lot of money too. It's not, yeah. especially at that age, you know. Oh, yeah. You're not talking about just a couple of thousand. So I appreciate oh, you just yeah. kind of painting that picture for people who are maybe wondering what it was. Um, mm. But Taj, real quick, if you could share, like, was there a moment where you started making enough to kind of move out where you were, or did you expand to move somewhere else? Kind of how, walk us through that quickly. Yeah, so, um, you know, in, uh, in Yonkers, I, uh, you know, I, I got caught up real quick with, with the wrong crowd, and um, I wound up, you know, um, you know, Marcellus talking about his mom and his stepmom and how they felt like he was, he just was kind of too far gone. You know, it was very, very similar actually about how that, how it went down with me and, you know, me and my mom. My mom actually found, you know, a, a, a gun under my bed and, and some drugs and some money. And she actually called the police and got me locked up. Mm. And uh, they, they came and got me. And, and that's when I can honestly say when my heart turned cold, you know, when my heart turned cold because I, I, I spent the weekend, you know, in a, in a, in a holding cell. Mm -hmm. And when I got out and they took me to court, nobody was there. You know, I didn't have, my mom wasn't there, none of my family. And so mm -hmm. when I walked out, yep. you know, I was like, you know what, it's on. It's on. It's, it's you know, like the streets is my family and this is, what's, this is how I'm going to do it. Right. So, right. I, you know, I got caught up with the wrong crowd real quick. I winded up leaving my mom's house. I moved in with some shady cats and uh, things went totally downhill from there. And about two years later, the, the guy that, that, that gave me the gun and gave me the drugs that my mom found, he was moving weight um, out of state in Virginia. And during this time, you know, all of the rappers, all of the people, like the, the older dudes that I looked up to, they, were, they all had stories of going out of state, you know, making money out of state. And so um, he, 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 come, he comes to, he finds me and he comes up to me and he's like, yo, I heard you messed up in the game, man. I got a job for you. What's good? Do you want to, you know, you want to go out of state, go out of town? Mm. And um, I was like, I don't know, man. You know, like, I don't know nobody. And he was like, yo, look, your family, they, they, where they at? You know what I'm saying? Where your family at? What, what, right. you, what you staying here for? You ain't got nothing going on. He's like, look at you, you look bad, fam. Come on, man. So, yeah. you know, again, thinking about my, my, you know, my environment and how I grew up, hearing about the stories of guys going out of state, you know, coming back with Beamers and, and you know, all these exotic cars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like kind of like that, that pride, you know, they came back with that pride, like, yeah, I'm the man. Mm. That was just going through my mindset. So I wound up leaving New York and relocate into um to, to Virginia. So when I when I get to Virginia, this is like in 2000, I go right into the spot. I don't know nobody from Virginia. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like like the the, the guy that actually had me, you know, asked me to come down there. Mm -hmm. He was just supplying us with the, you know, with the weight, but he wasn't there. He was collecting and he was chilling back in New York. So I go right into the spot into an environment that I don't know anything about. I don't know these dudes. He got the sh everything set up already. And so that's how it started. And about, you know, two years later, you know, I actually got locked up, went, got caught up into, the, you know, to a raid. I actually got caught up in a raid where they locked me up and I went to jail. And as soon as I got out of jail, I went right back into the spot, you know, and my mindset was like, okay, I'm going to take over. I'm going a, I'm to, a, you know, get the money and start hustling for myself. And I did that. And so at the height, you know, I had, I had about 10 pounds of like exotic, 
you know, um, trees that, that I was moving at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing money. It was good money at the time, but the money was also, it also went fast and never lasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. And that, that kind of brings us to the next thing of, of really, you know, what was it? And we can start with Marcellus. Um, just briefly share, what was it that, that made you say, you know what, this is, this is not what I want to do. Um, you know, you kind of talked about ties, the, the allure of the game, you know, right. the, the money that, but that, that sometimes eventually wears off. Right. But what, yeah. what, what was it that made you say, I want to step away from this? Um, I think it was a time of uh, one of my friends uh, wound up getting uh, shot, um, mm. which, you know, which was with uh, a couple of my other friends. Uh, the goal was to uh, kidnap him, uh, bring him back to his house and rob him. Mm. But it didn't go, you know, it didn't go that way. Um, what happened, you know, my friend wind up uh, saying the name of the guy that was trying to uh, rob him. And, you know, you never do that, you know, because, you know, you never know that if the guy thinks that you're going to retaliate. Yeah. So because he mentioned, you know, the guy's name, he wound up shooting him in the alley in the head, blowing his uh, brains all out on the sidewalk. Wow. You know, so... And about a week later, I had another friend of mine uh, who, who told me that there was a, a neighborhood was actually looking, uh, looking to rob me. Hmm. You know, so we're talking about not just one or two people. We're talking about a whole block. Yeah. You know what I mean? A, a whole, you know, community, you know, just, you know, looking for uh, one person. Because I had a, a, a gambling problem, too. You know, I would shoot dice, play uh, tonk, play cards, and I would lose like twenty, thirty thousand dollars. You know, and I would wear all these different clothes. You know, uh, so you were a target. Yeah, uh, cards and stuff like that, and that's kind of like, okay, you know, this guy right here is is making paper. Mm -hmm. You know, let's you know let's you know also let's try to rob him. You know, so once he told me that, I'm like, okay. Uh, I need to, you know, have a, have like a plan B. And also at the time I had a son too. And mm. I think he was what, maybe two years old. So this yeah. wasn't also uh, like a long time goal for myself. Yeah. You know, so, you know, by hearing those things, you know, that made me like, you know what, you know, they're looking for me, mm. you know, uh, uh, next. So let me try to uh, be able to get away from that. So what I wind up doing, uh, was to move to uh, Riverdale, Maryland. Yeah. I moved from Washington, D.C., and uh, all the money that I had, you know, uh, I moved to, uh, to uh, Riverdale, Maryland. I had a, a, a junkie who signed a lease for me who had, you know, credit, because I, mean, I ain't had credit at that time. <laughs> you know, so I paid him, you know, a couple of rocks. He, uh, you know, got me an apartment up in Riverdale, Maryland. I moved me, my son, and I was living uh, with my uh, uh, my girlfriend at at the time, and yeah. he moved away from that environment. Got you. you know, so, yeah. you know, so you got out. You moved out. Yep. Moved to a different area. You said different enough. Area. Enough is enough. Enough. Yep. Because um, too many of my friends were getting killed. I think like four of them. Yeah. You know, so you know. So so um, Taj, real quick, if you can kind of share, real real brief about you know, eventually there was a point in your life where not only did you get out of the game. But you, I guess, somehow got involved with church. Right. Um, can you kind of share that? Was it right out of the game or did you already get out of it? Now, this was, this was like maybe six years later from, mm -hmm. from when I moved to um, Virginia. So from 2000, I got to Virginia. And, you know, um, 2006, I was still hustling. You know, I went from, treat, you know, selling weight, of, you know, of, uh, exotic to, uh, you know, um, selling pills, you know, I, you know, unfortunately, I'm not proud of it, but, you know, me, right. me and my friends were like the first people to bring ecstasy pills to, to, to that area. So we had the whole place going crazy off pills. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we started messing around with, you know, with guns and things like that. And um, we would go out and party. And it was just weird because I was doing a lot of the same stuff that I always have been doing but I just wasn't having fun anymore. Hmm. And I, I couldn't explain it. And I'm like, I get drunk, try to get, you know, more wasted, try to make more money, try to sleep with more women. 
and I just wasn't having fun. And I'm like, man, what's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me, mm. you know? And um, my, my uh, you know, my wife, we weren't married at the time, but we, we had, you know, our son and she had a, um, a daughter from a previous relationship that I, you know, also raised as my own. She, she saw my life. She saw it. And she had planned on leaving me in like, mm-hmm at the end of the month, she was like, I'm gonna give this another month. We've been together for like almost six years. This wow. dude's not changing. He's wilding out. He's bringing guns in the house. Mm-hmm. I got my kids here. I got to get away from him. If he doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, if he doesn't really make some decisions in about 30 days, I'm gone. But she was wow. going to church. Now mm-hmm. here I am, I, I kind of grew up in church. Yeah. And she's going to church. And I would see my son and my daughter come back and they were like, Daddy, da, 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 you know, we had this, and they showed me the little crafts, you know, Kingdom Kid crafts and stuff like that. Wow. And that's when it really hit me, man. I said, you know what? Let me, I really need to change my life and maybe give this God thing a chance. Hmm. So we started all going to church together. We got married. And about a month later of us going to a, you know, a, a random church, uh, somebody reached out to me at, at my job. I, I slowed down hustling, tried to get a job, started trying to do the right thing, and God just... Wow. You know, met me at the right time because that I was ready to change and God came in and he met me and mm-hmm. um, I started studying the Bible and um, it was on from there. Like once once I started studying the Bible and, you know, I was able to really deal with a lot of the demons in my life. I was like, yo, this is this is this is what it is, man. This is what this is what I was been looking for the whole time. I yeah. thought it was the streets. I thought it was drugs. I thought it was money. I thought it was women. But it's really, you know, God, that's what I've been looking for. And. Wow. You know, 2007, April 22nd, 2007, you know, I decided to change my life, give it, give it to Christ, get baptized. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife got baptized about a month later. My daughter got baptized a couple mm-hmm. of years later. And, um, you know, yeah. it's been, it's been a blessing ever since, you know, 13 years strong, you know, praise wow. God. Yeah, praise That's God. amazing. It's amazing. I mean, to think about someone living that type of life. And as you both shared, I mean, there was a void that you sort of were trying to fill. I mean, definitely, Taj, you're saying that. And I feel like Marcel is kind of saying that as well. Once you lost your dad, you turned to the streets. You turned to this right. to kind of fill that void. Um, but it sounds like you both found a void uh, or you were able to fill that void the right way. And you, right. you ended up finding God or, in a sense, God finding you, you know. Right. Um, right. For Marcellus, we, we filmed his whole story. And uh, it's on YouTube. So for the sake of time, I definitely want to encourage people. We'll put the link in the description for that. Um, because it could take a long time to kind of share that. But, you know, again, just briefly, you know, hearing Marcellus, um, your story, you know, when we filmed it, to know that you were able to get out of that life and somebody met you on a basketball court and, wow. uh, you know, challenged you to basketball, your, your game, and they, they beat you and they the humbled first you. The first, yeah, the first time they beat you, but it yeah. humbled you. And, and yeah. you, you're like, <laughs> there must be something about this guy, you know, and it right. must be That's God right. that helped him beat me because I'm the greatest. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, to, to hear that, to, to know that you guys had a tough life, um, you know, some things you may have brought on yourself, but you were able to get out of that. Yeah, I right. think it's totally inspiring. And it, and it ties in with what we're going through now. I mean, we're going through a tough time. Everybody's got something they're going through right now with this, this pandemic. Right. Um, but God is the ultimate gift that we have, you know, and, and if you don't know him already, then reach out to us. We'll help you. I mean, these guys right here have already shared their, their deep, uh, darkest moments. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for sharing this and uh, definitely hope that someone can see this and get inspired and hopefully can turn towards the right things to fill their voids. Um, yeah. But I appreciate you both. And um, any last words, Marcellus? Um, man, I appreciate uh, you having me on here, man. I mean, uh, for anybody who's thinking about going down that road, uh, I will say try to surround yourself uh, with positive people. That's, right. that's the key to be able to get out of it, Absolutely. is to be able to move a, a, a away from your surrounding and around definitely. positive people. Yeah, definitely. Well, I appreciate you guys, man, for sure sharing your hearts. Maybe we'll have a part two. We didn't have enough time, but maybe we'll do a part two and, and follow up. But I thank you guys. Stay safe out there. And we'll definitely connect soon. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you having us, James. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Sure. Man.